Hey guys, welcome back to Study Buddies. So today we're going to learn about forces and motion. Okay, the first part of this lesson is inertia. So what is inertia? Inertia is the tendency of an object to maintain its state of motion. It means if the object is at rest, it will try to remain stationary. And if it is moving, it will try to continue to do so. The basic concept of inertia is, the heavier the object, the higher its inertia. This explains why it is harder for heavier objects to change its direction and motion compared to the lighter ones. Proceeding to momentum. Momentum is the product of mass and velocity. The formula of momentum is P equals to mv, where P is the symbol of momentum, m is the mass of the object, and v is the velocity of the object. The SI unit of momentum is Newton's second. Moving on to Newton's law of motion. As we know, there's three of it which are Newton's first law, second law, and third law. Newton's first law is known as law of inertia. Also can be defined as an object which is stationary or moving at constant velocity will continue to do so unless an external force acts on it. Newton's second law can be defined as the rate of change in momentum. The equation for Newton's second law is F equals to MA, where F is net force, M is mass of the object, and A is acceleration of the object. So you might be wondering why it is defined as rate of change in momentum when the equation is F equals to MA and not F equals to P over T. Okay, we can actually derive F equals to P over T from the equation F equals to MA. Acceleration can also be written down as V over T, rate of change in velocity. Now, substitute the A with V over T and you will get F equals to MV over T. Based on what we have learned just now, momentum is equals to mv. Therefore, you can substitute the mv with p and you will get the equation f equals to p over t. So that is why we define Newton's second law as the rate of change in momentum. Meanwhile, Newton's third law states that every action has an equal reaction in the opposite direction. Next, we will learn about force. Force can be classified into two, which are internal force and external force. Internal force means the force acts within the object. As for external force, the force acts external to the object. The example of internal forces are nuclear force, vibration of atoms, and weak force. External force can be further classified as contact and non-contact forces. Contact forces exist when the object is in contact with another, while non-contact forces exist all the time. No matter if the object is hanging or placed on a surface, non-contact force will always act on the object. So the example of contact forces are friction, normal force, and tension of the string, while non-contact forces are gravitational force and electrostatic force. Let's have a look at gravitational force. Gravitational force always acts vertically downwards and this force is also known as 
weight of the object. Since this force is the weight of the object, we can represent it with weights formula, which is W equals to mg. W is weight of the object, m is mass of the object, and g is gravitational acceleration. The magnitude of gravitational acceleration is 9.81 meter per second square. However, this is not the same for all the planets. Different planet has different gravitational acceleration. 9.81 meter per second square is the gravitational acceleration of the Earth. Let's proceed with normal force. Normal force is commonly known as reaction force. It only exists if the objects are in contact. Take a note that normal force always acts perpendicular to the surface. Usually, the direction of the normal force is towards the positive y-axis. As you can see in both the diagram below, the normal force is acting perpendicular to the surface in which the objects are in contact with. Now, let's look at frictional force. There's two types of frictional force which are static friction and kinetic friction. The similarity between both the frictional force is both opposes the direction of the motion of the object. For an example, if the motion of the box is to the right, then the direction of the frictional force will be to the left. However, both the forces have their own properties. Static friction keeps the object at rest. The formula of static friction is Fs lesser than or equals to mu n. Mu is the coefficient of static friction while n is normal force. When a static friction is at maximum, we indicate that as limiting friction. Meanwhile, kinetic friction resists the motion of an object. The formula of kinetic friction is Fk equals to mu n, where mu is the coefficient of kinetic friction and n is normal reaction. This diagram depicts the graph of force of friction and applied force. The region from the origin to point A is known as static region. In this region, the object remains stationary as the force applied there is static friction. At point A, the static friction is at maximum. Thus, we call that point as limiting friction. The region from point D to B is where the static friction exceeds the kinetic friction. Meanwhile, point C and onwards is known as kinetic region. In this region, the kinetic friction remains constant. Let's take a look at a question for a better understanding. The coefficient of static friction between the 5 kg box and 40 degree inclined plane is 0 0.6. What minimum force must be applied to the box perpendicular to the incline to prevent the box from sliding down the incline? Alright, so for this kind of question, it is better for us to sketch the drawing. In this case, we have to draw a 40 degree inclined plane and a box on it. Now, let's label all the forces acting on the box. We have weight of the box acting vertically downwards and normal force acting perpendicular to the surface. We also have static friction opposing the motion of the box. Now, we have to find the minimum force applied to the box perpendicular to the inclined plane to prevent it from sliding. In order to find that, we have to resolve the weight first into x and y components. Take a note that 
for inclined plane questions your angle of the inclined plane is always equal to the angle between your weight and its y component therefore in this question your angle between the weight and y component is 40 degree and with that you will get w sin theta as your x component and w cos theta as your y component okay we are done with sketching part now let's move on to calculation part first we have to solve the x components which are the blue arrows in this situation let's take the direction of fs as positive and w sin theta as negative this is because fs is moving towards positive x axis while w sin theta is moving towards negative x axis fs minus mg sin 40 degree equals to 0 since w equals to mg we can substitute w sin 40 by mg sin 40 the reason why this equation is equal to 0 is because the box is not moving it is static just substitute the values into the equation and you will get the magnitude of static friction since we know the value of static friction we can now find the value of normal force using static frictions formula fs equals to mu n substitute the values into the equation and we will get normal force is equal to 52.55 newton now we can find minimum applied force n minus fa minus mg cos 40 equals to 0 again substitute all the values into the equation and solve it and we will get the magnitude of minimum force must be applied to prevent the box from sliding down therefore the magnitude of minimum force must be applied to the to the box is 14.98 newton next is tension force this force acts on both end of rope string or wire the direction of tension force is always towards the center of rope string or wire the diagrams below shows the tension acting on the string when objects are attached to it so from the diagrams itself you can see that the tension is acting towards the center of the rope moving on to free body diagram so what is free body diagram free body diagram represents the object in actual diagram with just a dot or a point it shows all the forces acting on that particular object so the diagram on your right is an example of actual diagram and the one below it is its free body diagram as you can see all the forces acting on that box is drawn out in the free body diagram so the last part of this lesson is net force net force is the sum of all forces acting on an object the general formula of net force is f net equals to f1 plus f2 plus f3 where f1 is force 1 f2 is force 2 and f3 is force 3 let's take a look at another question before we end today's lesson the distance between two telephone poles is 100 meter when a 2 kg bird lands on the telephone phone wire midway between the poles the wire sacks 0.5 meter how much tension does the bird produce in the wire ignore the weight of the wire 
All right. So first, let's draw the free body diagram by representing the bird as a point. Then, show all the forces acting on it. The tension in the wire will be the same on the two sides because the bird lands at the center of the wire. Now, resolve the tension of the wire into X and Y components. Since we don't know the angle, we can represent it by theta. However, we can find the angle by taking the right side of the tension, which will eventually form a right angle triangle. You can either choose right or left to find the tension of the triangle. So, if you look at the triangle, the adjacent would be 50 meter, while the opposite would be 0 0.5 meter. Why is it 50 meter and 0 0.5 meter? Since the bird landed on the midway between the poles, the distance is divided by 2, which is 100 meter divided by 2, that would give us 50 meter. Meanwhile, the opposite has a length of 0 0.5 meter because the wire sacks by 0 0.5 meter. Now, we can find the angle by using the basic trigonometric concept. Tangent theta would give 0 0.5 over 50. In order to find the value of theta, we have to inverse tangent it, which will give us theta equals to 0 0.57 degree. Since we already know our angle, we can take the y component and solve it to obtain the magnitude of the tension. 2t sine 0 0.57 degree minus mg equals to 0. The reason why we times 2 t sine 0 0.57 degree is because both the tension will give you T sine 0 0.57 degree at the positive y axis when you resolve it. As usual, substitute all the values into the equation and solve it. This will give us tension equals to 986.11 Newton. So that is all for today's lesson. Thanks for watching the video guys. Hope you all liked it. Please like and subscribe to our channel. Also, don't forget to hit the bell button down there. If you have any doubt, do comment in the comment section below. Thank you and bye.